Well, your Tuesday just got a lot better, didn't it? As always, thank you for listening to Headbangers and Hooligans, and it's yours truly, Scumalicious. And I posted it earlier on the Facebook page. It's a terrible Tuesday. I was just trying to come up with a cool fucking title. Obviously, that didn't happen. But really, is it a terrible Tuesday? Well, weather-wise, it is here in Iowa. Winter came early, and we're so fucking happy about that. Uh, but I can't. I use the word terrible, but uh, these are fifteen things that epically disappointed me. All right, use the word epically. That's for the young listeners out there, because I want to. I want to sound cool. Uh, so it'll be a little bit of everything today. But as always. Should be entertaining. We're going to get right after it. And these are not in order. Like from, you know, 15 down to 1. It's not like that. Because they all sucked. Alright. Visiting New York. We're going to go back a ways. uh, About 25 years. And if, if you're from New York and you're listening to me, I don't think there's a lot of you listening to me right now. It's really not a slight against New York. Well, it kind of is. First off, there's too many fucking people that live there. Could not walk down the fucking sidewalk. There were so many people. Um, And just like in the movies, TV shows, everyone's an asshole. Don't ask for directions. Don't ask to use a fucking bathroom anywhere. Uh, Just, I I don't know how they do it. I, I just really don't. Uh, went to the Statue of Liberty, walked up that giant motherfucker, and holy shit, it felt like six years to get to the top of that bitch. I did, uh, but just just not a fan. I'm not. I get it. People that lived there and grew up there, it's like, it's in your blood, you know? I, I'm glad I grew up in Iowa. Just saying, all right? Number two, California. Holy shit. I just went from New York to California. Just like that. Uh, Probably around 96 is when I drove out there. Because what was I going to do? I was going to go to California and start a band. And I was going to work out there and live because I always wanted to go to California. Northern California, it was nice. It was. It was cool to drive through there. The the trees, the mountains, uh, the river with the uh, floating needle in it wasn't such a great sight to see. Not going to lie about that. But when you get to California and you see that to get a one-bedroom apartment is going to cost you like $1,300 a month to live there, it's like... Well, guess what? Iowa really isn't that bad. Holy shit! I just, I didn't feel like working three jobs at the time to uh, survive, so uh, my little dream didn't last very long. Because reality smacked me in the face. Bitch slapped me. So, New York and California both epically disappointed me. Uh, but if I had to pick one over the other, I would definitely live in California. I'd, I'd rather work the three jobs and live there than live in New York. Just saying. Number three. The Germs Derby Crash. Uh, and this is from the movie Decline of the Western Civilization, Part 1, The Punk Years. Uh, I'd heard about the germs when I first started getting into punk. All this stuff. The germs, the germs. Just had never really... Listen to him. Holy fucking shit. Darby Crash singing live in that documentary. It is the worst fucking singing you will ever hear. Gigi Allen is a better singer than Darby Crash. It is just... He's so fucked up all the time. They have to tell him to sing into the mic. Uh, and then he talks about before the before the show, he drinks some beer and then he'll pop some pills and then he'll whatever he can get his hands on, right? 
And uh, for those that don't know, he, he died of a heroin overdose. At, he was either 21 or 22, so he, he died young. Uh, but, oh, my goodness, it is. I mentioned Gigi Allen about the movie that they're making about him. And I said, who would pay money for that shit? And I'm telling you, it's the same thing with Darby Crash. Who would pay money to hear him sing? Oh, my goodness. I was like, okay, I get it. It's punk, but fuck. At least the Ramones, you could understand what they... They were okay singers. Johnny Rodden had a unique voice. Darby Crash, rough. Whew. Not kidding. All right, number four. Switching gears. Tommy Morrison. Yep, that Tommy Morrison. And if you want to watch a documentary uh, that'll depress the shit out of you, watch his uh, 30 for 30 on ESPN. Uh, he, of course, you know, eventually got AIDS and died. Did not even look like the same fucking person. It's so sad. Uh, but when I started watching him, I was like, yeah, Tommy Morrison. Just, he was like a, I just, anytime his fight was on, I had to watch. Uh. But two times, not just once, but twice, he crushed me. And the first time was getting destroyed by Ray Mercer. And uh, if you haven't seen it, if you're not a boxing fan, just do me a favor. Get on YouTube, look up Ray Mercer and Tommy Morrison. Tommy's clobbered his ass first four rounds. But in the fifth round, Mercer just fucking destroys him. It's one, it's one of the most brutal knockouts in, in heavyweight history. He just, uh, he annihilated him. And I was devastated. I really thought he was going to win that fight. Uh, and I thought, okay, maybe he'll come back. And he did. He made a bit of a comeback. Uh, he beat George Foreman. I know George Foreman was 50, or however old he was. But then he fought Michael Bent. Yeah, and everybody's like, who the fuck is Michael Bent? Uh, it, and it was in his hometown, Tommy's hometown, so everybody was going crazy. Got knocked out in the first round. He he actually got knocked down three times, and they stopped the fight. And then when you're watching that 30 for 30 documentary, you find out the night before the fight, he was out till like 5 or 6 in the morning. Fuck. Just... Just a sad story. Um, I was a huge fan, but and uh, um, it just his his life ended horribly, and yeah, epically disappointed all the way around on that one. Number five, this shouldn't be a surprise either. Fat Mike of No Effects. Uh, when I was younger, that's all I talked about. No effects. No effects. They're awesome. I love their shit. And he's such a dick. He really is. And uh just all the all the other shit that, that he's involved in. Don't get me wrong, I'm not I'm not hating a guy for uh being smart. He's a smart businessman. He's owned a record label for how long now? Fat fat wreck? what, 20 years or so, probably even longer than that. But he dabbles in all this shit, and now he's making a, a clothesline with that one chick. And he just, like, constantly brags about how much fucking money he makes and then wants to talk about how punk he is. And all these other fucking bands are struggling, uh, busting their ass, just just to make money. And he's just up there fucking sucking down money. Just eating it. Wiping his ass with it. Uh, and I'll never forgive him for being a dick to trailer trash. Uh, uh, that stupid comment in Las Vegas. 
It wasn't funny. And uh, I don't care what anyone says. Either it was last year or the year before. He kicked gutter mouth off of that fucking show. And it had nothing to do. And it was all because of politics. That's why. Because Mark Guttermouth, or Mark Guttermouth, Mark Atkins, didn't suck his ass. And it's so ridiculous because Guttermouth and No Effects, they, they grew up together. It's just, uh, I, I mean, as far as bands, I'm not saying it's little kids, but those two bands, Guttermouth and No Effects, yeah. Did all kinds of shows together in the early days and... Uh, yeah, seriously, epically disappointed. I've been saying that a lot, I know. All right, sixth thing, thing I said, it's a movie, Godfather 3. Uh, and I remember when it came out because I was so excited, and so was mom. Mom was a big fan of Godfather 1 and 2, just like me, uh, Wow. Just really not a very good movie. Uh, good actors, just a bad script. Um, Andy Garcia, I like Andy Garcia, that was uh, Al Pacino's son. But that chick, uh, so- Sophia Coppola, Francis Ford's daughter, should have never been in that movie. Horrible performance. Uh, it wasn't a great movie to begin with, but she just made it worse. I, I'm like, why is this woman in this movie? She can't act. She she couldn't even make it in a Lifetime movie. Not ripping on it. I love Lifetime Movie Network. Everybody knows that. But she was awful. And how many years was it that that, between Godfather 2 and Godfather 3... 14, 15 years, and then they give us that that pile of shit. Those two, the first one and the second one, how amazing are those fucking movies? And then they give us that third one, and it's just a turd fest. I almost cried. Not going mm-hmm. on. Number seven. How terrible Guns N' Roses was live. In 1987, saw him at the uh, Hilton Coliseum. They opened up for Aerosmith. And at the time, okay, Guns N' Roses was the shit. Appetite for Destruction. Uh, that, uh, that album in high school, I probably heard it 500 fucking times. But Axl Rose was so fucking terrible. And Slash was fucked up. They, had to, they stopped a couple times and fucked up on some songs. And we know all the stories. Uh, but I was really pumped to see them at the time. And I got there, and they started playing. And it was like, wow, these guys aren't very good. They've sold millions and millions of this one album. And they suck. They did. Number eight. Uh, This this hurts me to even mention this. It really does. Ten foot pole. The new ten foot pole album that came just came out this year. Escalating quickly. I I seen some comments on YouTube. I'm not going to trash this band just for the simple fact that they've been around forever. Scott Rudinsky sang with them. They're pretty cool guys. Uh, They've been getting after it for years, and all these other bands making money, they're not. But but just, the the music isn't that good. Uh, They have keyboards, and I I don't have a problem with keyboards, but it's the way they use them. Just makes some of the songs sound so fucking cheesy. Uh, The first song ain't bad. It's... It's decent, I guess. But there's no songs that just, you're like, wow, I got to fucking hear that again. And 
I was so excited when I heard they were recording a new album, and then I seen it. Oh, it was on YouTube. I was like, yes, I, I can listen to it, and then I'll, I'll buy it. I didn't buy it. And I feel horrible f- for saying that. I love this band, but that is a bad album. Just my opinion. And I was really surprised that I hated it, to be quite honest. Number nine. Ninth time I was epically disappointed. Back to Hollywood. Planet of the Apes, 2001. Uh, I loved the original Planet of the Apes. Yes, that one with Charlton Heston. Get your hands off me, you damn dirty ape. But uh, I loved it. I I even loved the second one. Third one wasn't bad. The the next two were kind of cheesy, but I loved the Planet of the Apes movies. And I was married at the time, and me and my wife went to the movie theater to, to see it. Whoa. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm not going to rip on Mark Wahlberg. It's not his fault. He didn't write the script. And I can't... Is it Tim Roth, the guy that played the asshole chimpanzee? What was that? (laughs) He acted like he had rabies or something throughout the whole fucking movie. It, uh, It just a bad, bad movie. And... In the original, Charlton Heston is riding on the horse. I'm sure everyone remembers, and you see the Statue of Liberty in the sand, which means we got we had a war and destroyed everything, and then the apes took over. Well, in this one, Mark Wahlberg gets to the uh, wherever he's going. I can't remember city. See, it's I don't even care how it fucking ended. It was so bad, but instead of Statue of Liberty, it's a statue of an ape, so they reversed the ending, which was stupid, too. And then uh, Mm -hmm. the female uh, ape that helps, she's a doctor that helps Mark Wahlberg. It's almost like she has this love fest for him. I'm like, oh, my God, are we talking bestiality? Which actually would have been a more interesting movie, now that I think about it. And he he goes to kiss her. Oh, you're just so damn ugly. Just, they... uh, Bad fucking movie, and I was so excited about it. My wife wasn't as excited to see it as I was, but... Went and seen it anyway, and uh, we wasted our money. Hard to believe that 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 came out in 2001, by the way. Fuck. That shit makes me feel old. Tenth time... I was disappointed. We're staying in Hollywood on this one. Blair Witch Project. Yeah. And I think about it. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I was still married when I went to this movie. And I'm the one that picked this one out too. Blair Witch Project is one of the most overrated movies in history. And I get the story. It's cool. Didn't have a lot of money. They're the ones that starred the handheld camera shit. There's nothing fucking scary in that movie. Nothing. And I see all these top 20 lists, that, and they're always in there. She's in the tent. She's like, oh, I'm so scared right now. And then the tent moves, or the wind blows the tent. We don't see fucking anything and I get it that's part of the suspense when you don't see something but literally nothing happens they get lost in the woods and there's some weird things they see like that somebody has done with trees see I don't even remember anything because it was so fucking stupid and I remember when the movie was over the guy sitting behind us him and his girlfriend he's like ah fuck that He's like, I can't believe we paid money for this shit. And I'm like, I hear you. I hear you, man. Just not a good movie. I'm sorry, it's not. The 11th time I was epically disappointed. This is a recent one. 
probably about three years ago, went to the Epitaph Records website. I, I, I just have to remind you, at one time, Epitaph Records, they had Poli, they had the Bouncing Souls, they had Agnostic Front, Gutter Mouth, Rancid, bands that I, I've talked about at nauseum. What the fuck happened? Come on, Brett. The guy that used to be in Bad Religion. What happened to this record label? The, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't even know what half of these bands are that are on this label. I understand. Music industry has changed. Uh, but really? I, there, there's shit on there. I, bands I click on, clicked on. Uh, Joyce Manor. I, I was saying to myself, who listens to this and says, wow, I got to buy this. I hate being that guy, but I'm not going to lie about it. Ain't going to sh- sugarcoat it. You know that. It's, it's just awful, and it's sad because I used to love that label. Um, Pennywise I've got a lot of CDs and cassettes with that epitaph symbol on them but I I haven't bought anything from epitaph in a long time and I know why number 12 this one hurts was it last year yeah last year I believe in June Best Buy stopped selling CDs. That's That sums it up right there. Nobody buys CDs anymore. Uh, records, which is cool. I like the fact that records are making a comeback and people are buying cassettes. That's awesome. But nobody's buying full albums anymore. They just download the shit. Best Buy used to be the shit. I bought Gore there, Steel Panther, Strung Out. Think about that. One store. Where in the fuck are you going to find a store like that? Where you go in and find my bands. Gutter Mouth. <laughs> Gutter Mouth, Strung Out, Gore, and Steel Panther. Uh... They had a great selection. And see, that's just, it makes me sad. It really does. Uh, Just a sign of the times. But that day sucked. That's when I knew right there, I was like, I'm an old motherfucker because they ain't even selling CDs now. Number 13. This is kind of an odd one. It'll feel random. When I traded in my 87 blue Camaro for a Mazda 626. Why was I epically disappointed? Because I I believe my son was around three or four at the time. And I was being a responsible adult. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Am I really being this responsible? And... The reason that Camaro was so awesome, it looked cool. It was a little rough, but it was still a Camaro. Had the fancy wheels, big tires on it, nice stereo. But it sucked in the winter. Fucking heater didn't work. Uh, When it snowed, the tires would start spinning. And then it wouldn't start. I had to jump start it every other day. I was like, I can't do this. I got a kid. Uh, I just wish I could have kept it and then somebody that knew knew about cars could have fixed it. But at the time, I was like, I got I to gotta make sure my kid has a safe car to ride in. Wow. I'm just thinking about that. Like, was I really that responsible? Huh. I was. And that's, that's a, actually a nice job out of me. But it's still disappointing. Because I had to give up the car. 
Number 14. Odorous Urungus' death. Never got to meet him, even though I saw him live. And I'm telling you, I, I regret it to this day. Municipal Waste was signed on my shirt, and then I seen him and Mike, Mike Dirks, a.k.a. Ballsack. Odorous, a.k.a. Dave Brocky, going into the club. And I should have said, Dave, Dave. I didn't, because I got distracted. And how would I have known, how could I have known, that four years later, he'd be dead. And what really sucks, well, it it sucks anyway. Um, But, I miss his interviews. He he gave the best interviews on the planet. Uh, Just an asshole. I loved it. Um... I guess I should be grateful that I got to see him live. But, yeah, that day sucked. And I'll never forget it. Brian uh, texted me on the phone and said, Hey, I just seen on Facebook that Odors died. I was like, Fuck it, you got to be kidding me. I was crushed. It was like losing a family member. But, yeah, not a good day. And the 15th. Time. Not the final time, because I'll, I'll be disappointed more. Epically disappointed. Going back in time on this one. And this, I'm telling you, this crushed me at the time. Just like Planet of the Apes. King Kong. And I'm talking about the 1976 King Kong. Uh, and we know. Okay? King Kong at the end. He goes, climbs the... Uh, the tower and they shoot him off there but I was five when I went to that movie and I remember this because mom took me rest in peace thank you mom but I was obsessed with King Kong I remember I had the t-shirt had the glasses it was like King Kong that's my dude that's my boy right I didn't know that he fucking died in that movie I bawled. I remember mom's like, it's just a movie. I was so fucking mad. But it still pisses me off to this day, right? Because what was her name? Jessica Lang? What happened? He fell in love with the bitch, right? It's always a woman. But he didn't ask to come over here. Remember, they went to the island and they brought him off the island. They bring him to New York City, of course, where all the fucking maniacs are. And he gets... Gets all worked up over this chick. He's like, what What do I do? Well, I'll climb the tallest building and get shot down by a bunch of fucking assholes in planes. Fuck it. I, I'm serious. That, that really, it still pisses me off. King Kong didn't ask for that shit. Huh. I remember, too, where, like, fucks up that giant snake or lizard or whatever it is. I was like, oh, I was so amped up. I remember it. And then that ending. Mom, I remember. It's a son. It's just a movie. Oh, I was pissed. It took me a long time before I could watch that movie again. Like six or seven years. But even the new one, what was the, the newest one that came out? Not Skull Island, the one before that with Jack Black. I that was that was tough to watch too. Don't bring him over here. He doesn't want to be over here. Fucking leave King Kong alone. I'm serious. There you have it. Fifteen times, and I got to say it one more time that I was epically disappointed. Uh, real quick too, I posted it on the Facebook page. Uh, I'm available on iTunes now, uh, Podcast Addict, and soon I'll be available on iHeartRadio. And I know what you're saying. Where you're like, well, fantastic, Scumalicious. You weren't lying. You are taking over the internet. Well, I'm trying. And tomorrow, and I will, uh, I don't know what time at, but I'll post it on the Facebook page. Going live tomorrow. We're doing it live tomorrow. 
That's right. Should be fun. Should be a good time. Either way, like I always say, it'll be entertaining. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. As always, take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice. I'm out.